With Solana going down and requiring a network restart back in early February of 2024, an avalanche facing its first ever network stall for over five hours where no blocks were produced, I want to take an opportunity to take a deeper dive as to what might be going on. But the number two compared this to the Cardano ecosystem, which has been resilient since its inception back in early 2017. What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Fareed. As a part of today's video, I want to highlight Cardano's resilience amongst a growing crowd of blockchains acting as competitors, not only to Cardano, but also the king of this ecosystem, which is Bitcoin. So unfortunately, we just saw Avalanche going down on the main net with an outage where we saw no blocks being produced or validated for over four hours. Now I'm gonna preface this by saying, number one, this is by no means an attack on Avalanche. And then number two, I am by no means an expert on everything that has happened with the recent outage. So definitely do your own due diligence, take a look at everything online, but I'm gonna present you guys some of the best and most accurate information that I was able to find surrounding everything that we had today. And then I wanna highlight and just take a look at comparing some of the network uptimes, right? For some of the top blockchains, including Solana, Avalanche, Bitcoin, and Cardano, as well as Ethereum. So as always, if you guys do enjoy updates like these, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, consider subscribing to Dapp Central. And last but not least, if you have any questions or just want to share your opinion, then please leave a comment down below. So I want to just quickly kick things off here with what happened with Avalanche. So this was reported earlier today. Um, first thing I noticed when I woke up was the fact that there was a block finalization stall. Now, at the time that I'm shooting this video, the issue has been resolved. The majority of the validators on the Avalanche network have upgraded to a patched version, which basically disables a particular feature. And I'm going to jump into that here in just a minute. So very similar to how Cardano works, in order for a particular upgrade to be taken into account, the majority of validators on the network or in the ecosystem, which there's about, I think, 2000 on Avalanche have to upgrade to that version in order for it to take effect. So what we saw was, I think it was late yesterday or maybe early this morning, the majority of the validators on the ecosystem upgrading to a brand new version of Avalanche Go or the node release, which introduced a cross chain messaging um, system or a cross node messaging system. Again, do your own due diligence here. I'm going to jump over to this next page, which breaks down some of the actual issue, right? So it highlights the fact that this release, which was dubbed V1.10.18, led to the validators sending excessive amounts of gossip or just chatter and data to each other, therefore preventing um, some of the polling that needed to be done in order to validate blocks from that actually occurring. So it reads that Avalanche validators provision a stake weighted bandwidth allocation or amount of data for each peer or each node. And this buggy logic led to each node saturating their allocation with useless transaction gossip. Now, this particular dynamic prevented pull queries issued by the validators or by the nodes from being processed in a timely manner. And that led to their consensus mechanism failing or stalling as no polls were actually being handled. So again, the introduction of this new message messaging feature appears to have basically just clogged the network um, and just clogged the nodes with a bunch of useless gossip or a bunch of useless chatter. Now, following that, the team did release a brand new version, basically allowing for that feature to be disabled. And as soon as the majority of the Avalanche validators had upgraded, that version went into effect, basically allowing for that data to be freed back up and therefore Avalanche beginning to run again. So I'll leave the link to this down below. This is the official AVAX um, status website, breaking down all of their current ongoing or prior outages, right? So one thing I wanna do now is quickly highlight the fact that not too long ago, we also saw Solana having a restart. So this was about 17 days ago. So earlier today, Avalanche had a, their first ever, what I believe is their first ever outage on the mainnet. And then we saw um, Solana, which has had multiple outages on the mainnet, having one about 17 days ago. Again, I'm just gonna take a break here. This is not to dig at any of these blockchains. Keep in mind, these are facts. 
So I'm not, you know, concocting any sort of story here. These are facts that are available to the general public. And I want to highlight, you know, even though um, Cardano has developed extremely slowly, we are in a much better position with respect to network outages specifically. That's the goal of today's video. So jumping back in here, we saw Solana again down 17 days ago. And what they basically had to do was restart the entire network or the entire blockchain. So an unfortunate situation there, and that lasted about five hours. So let's jump back over here. And what I want to highlight is the uptime, right, for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, as it stands right now, has been up for over 4,001 days, which is extremely impressive. I believe the very last outage was reported, let's see, back in 2013, and that was extremely minor. I believe it was for just a couple of hours. And since then, there has been no downtime for Bitcoin. So again, the big daddy here has shown resiliency and strength, and the network only continues to get stronger and stronger as each, as, as each year, excuse me, goes by. Now, if I jump back over into the Avalanche stats here, and I take a look at the uptime, again, this was an interesting day today, being the first ever day that um, Avalanche has had a outage on the main net. So if I actually jump back, as you guys can see here, all of these are green, all the way until the inception of Avalanche itself. So um, prior to this, I am not aware of any sort of outages that have happened or occurred with Avalanche. And if I jump over to Solana's uptime, this was the one that happened 17 days ago. And what you'll notice here is actually a pretty interesting trend where there was some green, but then as we go back further and further, you're gonna notice more and more of these main net outages taking place. So the worst time here being around January of 2022, where that month was just full of outages lasting from 16 hours, 10 hours, Let's see here, 18 hours, 17 hours, and 12 hours, respectively. So if I keep going back, we have a few more straggled there, and this is the inception of Solana on the main net. So again, this was just a brief video wanting to first highlight what has been going on with the ecosystem and some of these other networks, but then taking a minute to compare that to Cardano. So one network that I haven't touched on yet is Ethereum. They did have an outage, which was around May of 2023. So they've actually been up and running for over, I believe, 330-ish days, but they too have had an outage. And that was right around the time where we had, um, I want to say it was preparations for their major hard fork or from their transitions over from proof of work to proof of stake, which has now made ETH deflationary. So in closing here, what I want to quickly highlight are just some of the benefits here and some of the things that Cardano has to face, but I think are inevitably for its good, which include a slower development timeline. So Cardano, while it has achieved all of its milestones with respect to the Cardano roadmap, it has taken a little bit longer and people have sort of kind of made fun of Cardano for taking this much slower and peer review um, approach, right, towards development, where we even had the founder of Solana basically telling the Cardano community or Cardano developers to kind of kiss the frog into just ship code, which as you guys just saw there earlier, hasn't really translated to solid uptime for Solana. Now, if Cardano is aiming to be the blockchain backbone infrastructure of the entire globe, you know, we have to have resiliency. And we do have that with Cardano being up for over 2300 days, never having ever gone down since it's since its inception. The closest that we've ever had to an issue with the Cardano nodes was reported back in January of 2023, where there was a desynchronization, which is different than an outage, right? The main net was still up and running. Transactions could have been processed, but we had, I believe, is about 40 to 50 percent of the nodes being desynchronized. And the cool thing about this is that the actual network sort of self-healed where a lot of these nodes restarted on their own and basically self-corrected. So this lasted for just a couple of hours, was instantly um, fixed, and there was an additional update pushed out by IOG in order to make sure that the latest Cardano node was not affected or was not susceptible to being affected by this very same issue. So again, it's not to say that Cardano is perfect, right? Um, because Cardano has had its own issues, but in terms of outages and just being live on the main net, since its inception back in September of 2017, Cardano has not had any downtime. 
So what I want to do is just quickly close out here on just some of the things that bring me to Cardano. And this hopefully should serve as a reminder for you watching this video as to why we're here in this ecosystem. And even though things may not always look the best from the outside, what I can say is that we have a lot on the way. That's really all I can share at this point. But Cardano is poised to make waste. One of the biggest things, again, is no reboots here in this ecosystem. We've seen Solana rebooting multiple times, most notably 17 days ago. Now, what happened with Avalanche just now was not a reboot, right? Um, but there was a stall in the actual production and validation of blocks on um, on the network. Now, unfortunately, that did impact all of the subnets that, uh, that operate within the Avalanche ecosystem. But again, it wasn't necessarily caused by the subnets, right? This was something that was out of their hands, and this was dealing with the core consensus mechanism right at the very root level of avalanche next with respect to cardano and just staking you know we don't have any slashing here if you take a look at eth even though they've transitioned over to pos right or proof of stake which is what cardano was built out of initially right they still have fees or they still have penalties in the event that there is a malicious or a node validator that's acting inappropriately on cardano that is not the case and on top of that your eth um, leaves your wallet if you want to stake with a third party. Whereas on Cardano, you have non-custodial liquid staking, make meaning that at no point does your ADA ever leave your wallet. It's the most secure form of staking that there is. And it's also the most robust with uh, additional models or which with additional features, excuse me, that can be supported, such as the ISPO model, right? Which allows for crowdfunding in a very simple and secure manner. Next, we have no downtime, which I already kind of talked about. And then one last thing I want to mention is just no forks, right? So with Cardano, we have the hard fork combinator. But anytime that there's a major hard fork or a major upgrade, like we saw with the Vassal hard fork and the Valentine SIP upgrade, um, we never had to have a brand new chain or there was never a spinoff, right? And this is due to the planning that IOG, the Cardano Foundation, Emergo, and just everybody who's contributing from a tech standpoint to the development of Cardano have thought of at the very beginning, right? Right. So again, even though Cardano has taken its time to develop and to deploy, whenever they do, it's done methodically with foresight, looking at some of these other outsider chains or other competing competing chains, excuse me, in order to make sure that we don't fall into the same sort of mistakes or into the same sort of mindsets, even though what we could do may not necessarily attract the masses early on. So I want to go ahead and just quickly close off this video by highlighting a tweet that I shared not too long ago. And this was on my Twitter, basically stating here, I'm not by any means throwing any shade, right? But these are just the facts. So Bitcoin has been running for over 4,001 days. I just showed you guys that there with the latest minor outage taking place in 2013. Cardano, since its inception in 2017, has never had any downtime. Now, I pray and hope that that continues to be the case. Um, but so far, so good with over 3,000 stake pools operating. Cardano is, is uh, on a perfect track. Now, following that, we have Ethereum, right, which is number two in terms of market cap and adoption right behind Bitcoin. And their last outage was 348 days ago, um, less than a year ago, followed by Solana, which they had an outage, which took place about two and a half weeks ago, 17 days ago. And then Avalanche, which had an, an outage or a um, stall and block production earlier today. So. I wanted to just quickly highlight that here, right? Um, this is not by any means to say that Cardano is better, but the slow and steady approach is beginning to pay off. And hopefully the general community is beginning to notice that Cardano has done something differently and it's beginning to finally pay off. So let me know what you guys think down below. Um, if you're an Avalanche user, you know, what are your thoughts? What can the Avalanche um, Foundation or Ava Labs do to make sure that this doesn't occur again in terms of communication? Um, and, you know, what would you what would you just like to see overall being improved? I know for myself here with respect to Cardano, I don't think that we have a network um, outage page or network status page. And even though we haven't had to use it yet, I would love to see something like that being launched live. That way we can have a quick and easy place to go and see exactly how well the Cardano network has performed. As always, if you guys enjoyed today's video or you just learned anything along the way, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, consider subscribing to Dapp Central. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me, then please make sure to go ahead and leave them down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.